it, yeah. Um, thank you all very much for joining us. Uh, my name is Ryan Stewart, and I am a product manager on a serverless project that we have at Adobe called IO Runtime. And I'm going to talk a little bit about what we're doing at Adobe with OpenWhisk and kind of set some context. And then Dragos is going to come and give the demo and do all the, uh, the exciting stuff. Our journey with serverless really came about as part of our uh, developer platform we're building out at Adobe called Adobe IO which is a collection of APIs, services, and SDKs for what we consider building next generation experiences. If you think about Adobe, there is just so much stuff that we have, everything from you know, Photoshop content to wear a film magic to our analytics services to our document cloud services and our creative cloud services. And Adobe I.O. is all about letting our developers and customers extend that and customize it so they can do interesting things and build on top of those services. So when we looked at serverless, and we sort of saw the trend of serverless, we thought to ourselves, what the world needs is one more serverless provider out there. <laughs> just kidding, just kidding. Um, we don't want to compete with Amazon or Microsoft or Google, as lucrative as that may be. What we looked at was a couple of specific use cases where we felt like our developer community and our, even our, some of our internal development teams could really leverage serverless and it would be a good fit for serverless computer, for, for serverless in general. One of those is running third-party code. Adobe has a ton of content and data stored throughout its servers. You know, gigantic Photoshop files, stock assets, general design assets, tons of customer data, marketing data, PDF files. There's a, a lot of data that Adobe has collected and that Adobe, ser or Adobe customers have given to us and, and store on our servers. And today what they have to do is they call APIs, they bring that data down to wherever they want to process it, and maybe they want to transform some images, or they want to do some transactional-based massaging of the data that they've collected about some of their customers or inventory that they have, and then they have to push it back to those servers, which is kind of cost prohibitive and also not very performant. So we felt like this was a fantastic use case for serverless if we let their development teams and our development community push their code directly to our platform so it can run right alongside the data and the content that they have stored with us. The second one that started to bubble up that I think is maybe even more interesting is as we looked at serverless and started thinking about how we could incorporate serverless into that wider developer platform was that our product teams wanted to start leveraging serverless as part of building out the next generation solutions for our customers. We have a bunch of cloud-based solutions. There are a lot of on-premise stuff that we do, but there are also a number of cloud-based solutions. And what our development teams are looking at doing is building some of the next generations of those solutions using serverless, and then giving our customers a way to write their own and, and deploy their own serverless actions so they can customize how our software behaves, they can extend it to work with whatever infrastructure or whatever functionality they have on their end. And so we see serverless as a way to let our development community and our customers extend some of the software that's running in our cloud. And when we looked at what we wanted to do for serverless, one of the things that we drew from and kind of how we were going to approach serverless was our open source, in, our open so open source background with Adobe, or some of the things that we've done. And it may be a little bit surprising, but Adobe has a surprisingly, I think, deep relationship with a lot of open source projects. We have successfully navigated Apache with Cordova, taking it from the incubator stage to the regular product stage. We have products like Brackets that are fully open source, a text editor. We even open source fonts. We have an entire font family that's completely the open source. And so this was important to us to be able to not only kind of take, make use of open source, but also belong to a community and really contribute back into the open source world when it came to serverless. And that was one of the huge things that we wanted to do. That was one of the big reasons why OpenWhisk in particular was, was exciting to us. Uh, we have fantastic partners with IBM. They had built a really fantastic foundation for, for OpenWhisk and serverless. Uh, they have an active community. They were looking for active contributions. And they had contributed that code to Apache. So it was a very formal process that Adobe was familiar with. Some of the other things that are really important to us in terms of, of making serverless work for us was we need to be able to run across multiple clouds. A company like Adobe has a bunch of our stuff on Amazon. We have a bunch of our stuff in Azure. We have a bunch of our stuff in a data center that we have, and customers even have some on-premise stuff that they're running. And so we wanted to be able to make sure that the serverless solution we chose for our developers and for our customers could run in all those places. And OpenWhisk was flexible enough, came with a fantastic developer community that we felt like that was the way to go. 
So with that, I want to turn it over to Drago. She's going to show you some of the things that we're contributing to OpenWhisk and kind of how we're looking at OpenWhisk, especially in terms of making it easy for developers to get started. So Drago, go ahead and take the demo away. Thanks, Ryan. So today, I'm, I'm the guy that gets into trouble. <coughs> I'm, I mean, doing a demo. <laughs> so I see the timer started to work. Uh, just a second, let me put this. I got two merit badges. <laughs> Hope I do two demos today. Uh, let's see how, how this goes. Yeah. So. Um, joking aside, yeah, we, we wanted to make it uh, easy for developers to start writing prototypes with uh, Adobe. As Ryan was saying we don't want to make a, a, a generic serverless platform, um, and we wanted to start let developers start easy. So this is what, what we came up with. Um, we kind of imagined that a lot of us put the code in GitHub, so we wanted to let developers start writing prototypes and things straight into GitHub. So GitHub was basically a, a no-brainer to think of. So we, we built um, kind of serverless with serverless. We built a serverless action that listens to GitHub when code changes in GitHub, gets that code, and uh, up, updates the function. And the repo is, uh, is open. Whoever wants to try OpenWiz can give it a try. I'm going to run two demos today. So to show you this in action, I have, um, I'm going to start simple, this is a hello world action does, it just says hello um, serverless con. This is my action code, I'm going to edit it in GitHub in a moment. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, I lost the badge. Um, <laughs> just give me a moment and thank you for your patience, yeah, I'm your displays, there we go. Almost here. Okay. Thank you very much for letting me know. <laughs> so as I was saying, the uh, serverless action that, is, that uh, deploys the code is found here. You're going to have links to the repo in case you guys want to have fun with it. So to my first demo, I was just showing a simple JavaScript action. I hope JavaScript is okay. It's light. For us, which just says hello something. Now, when we deploy this action, uh, developers may write in any, you know, any file give them any name. So for OpenWiz to know which, where, to, where the code is found and what to do with it, there's a very nice um, manifest which kind of helps us describe actions. This is a very beautiful piece of specification coming out of OpenWiz. So here I'm able to define, let me just make it a little bigger for you. I'm able to define a package which is called hello world and I'm deploying an action called hello and the, the source for this action is uh, right here. Um, and uh, in order to hook these two together, I had to listen to GitHub events. So for that, I, I set up a, a simple GitHub hook that invokes that serverless action that updates a serverless action. So uh, what I'm going to do, I'm going to do a quick edit right now. Um, earn back my first badge, let's see. Let's see. Um, I'm connected. Just, um, while this loads. How many of us are from Texas here? Anyone from Texas? Wow, nice, okay, cool. So probably you're gonna help me translate this. And let, and, um, no let Texas jokes, that means. <laughs> 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 so I'm gonna say hello, so let's go Austin. Um, I am fixing. <laughs> no Texas jokes. To do <laughs> something. <laughs> Do you know what that means? Of course you know, right? <laughs> I'm, this means I'm getting ready to do something. <laughs> Seriously, this takes us. Okay, let me save it. <laughs> Come changes. Unfortunately, I don't have the accent. I tried it. I tried it really hard. I come from Europe. It's really difficult for me. All right, so. My, my code is committed, and now, um, as a result of me committing the code, the webhook runs, and uh, that webhook, that serverless action, provides me with a direct link to my action, which is an HTTP yeah, uh, URI right here. I copied it, so the, it previously ran. Okay, so now I'm gonna refresh it. And, um, and it's, of course, the internet. I mean, it's not, latency is not a, case here. No. Yes, it worked. All right. So, bear with me for a moment. <laughs> All right. 
thank you. <laughs> so you, you would say, well, Dragos, this is so easy. I mean, it's a Hello World action, but in real life, I got to well, you know, work with other APIs. I got to put all third parties, libraries. How do I do that? So I said, um, OK, I'm going to show you a, a solution how, on how to do that. So um, I was thinking to add a third party library. So I decided to go with Slack. I hope you're familiar with Slack. So because I want to work with Slack, um, the other problem that I have is that Slack needs some secrets. And it, when we integrate with third party APIs, we need API keys, secrets, or tokens of this kind. So the question is, if I only have the manifest, where do I put that? Do I want to put it in, in the manifest and commit it to GitHub? Probably it's not the best option. So um, this is how it works. Uh, yeah, this is, um, let me show you some, some of the code. So this is uh, the, directly the Slack client NPM, which is not available in the OpenWhisk runtime by default, which, which is the, the container that runs this code. Um, I am loading it here in the action. I need that secret, which is the Slack webhook URL. It's a secret URL that anyone who knows can post, and I'll, you'll, you'll see it now. If you take a picture, you can, you can say hi, then it's Slack. Um, yeah, and I'm just going to say hello there. That's pretty much. Now, the manifest is going to define that this um, action is, is found here. The code is here. And if I go into the manifest, the second thing that it's going to say is it's going to mention that I need an input, and that input is the Slack web hook URL, which is, which is the secret, but I'm not providing it here. Instead, I am providing it into the webhook. So in the webhook URL, we program that uh, serverless action that deploys this code to just listen for any, any parameters that we provide. And I have this, the long Slack URL here, and this is also protected behind GitHub, Git, GitHub login. So if anyone cracks that and gets get access, it's a, it's a lot more pro problematic, you know. <laughs> um, lots of secrets here. So uh, the last part is, okay, now that I have a piece of code that, that requires um, that requires a Slack client, how do I do to push the Slack client into Git, right? So probably we're familiar with the fact that you can just zip something or put all the node modules into GitHub and they will all be uh, uploaded and so forth. I tried to do something different. So I tried to use a library which is brow Browserify. If you work with uh, Node or JavaScript, probably you know it. So I created a simple um, package.json uh, where I defined the Slack uh, depend yeah, dependent libraries in Slack. And then I have an npm install. So uh, the way it works is that I go on my uh, terminal and um, I'm going to say, well, I know in the previous example I wasn't there for Texas, so I should say here, howdy, and <laughs> y'all. <laughs> All right, and here it comes. If you, if you, know, if you know the meaning of this, um, You're this gonna and my first oh. rodeo. <laughs> <laughs> meaning, I know exactly what I'm doing, <laughs> hopefully. <laughs> All right, let me save this. <laughs> All right, and I do npm install. What this does is just compiles with Browserify a single JavaScript file. That's all, all it does. And if I look, this is the, the generated file. I go here to the bottom. Um, all the dependencies that I wanted are now included. So now this means I can commit this file to Git. Um, all okay, right, uh, git status, git add all. Um, hello. All right, thank you. Um, commit, okay, demo. All right, push. Code gets pushed, and now the webhook, the GitHub webhook should be invoked. And I am going to refresh this, and I should get a message on Slack. So let me um, turn off the Do Not Disturb and refresh this. And I'm also returning back the Slack webhook URL just for, for, for no purposes, really. It's just to show this is the Slack webhook URL. I, I didn't give it. I didn't provide it to, to my action. It was once I, I deployed it through GitHub, it became a default parameter. So every time the action is invoked, I have that parameter there. And that's why I can say, let me just go back to the code. 
Um, and I can say, uh, you know, the Slack URL is parameter Slack webhook URL. Um, yeah, that's, that's pretty much it. And this is the message that I got on, on Slack. So with just a few lines of code, I was able to make this deployment. So these are the kind of things that we want to enable for Adobe. Thank you very much for listening, uh, for bearing with me. I my second badge. <laughs>